Welcome to this video lecture on quality. Quality is used when we're under the vapor dome where we're dealing with a saturated liquid vapor mixture and it's used to determine what the properties are in that region. Now in the last video lecture we talked about how to find the properties when you're dealing with a compressed liquid or superheated vapor or when you're on the saturated liquid or saturated vapor lines but we didn't talk about how to find properties when you're under the vapor dome and when you have this mixture. Quality is used to determine what those properties are. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at your screen. So on the screen here, I just thought this was kind of a fun one. Here are some guys who are taking uh, an ice bath. So here's a guy in an ice bath here, and it looks like they have some some uh, devices to measure, you know, how the guy's doing, I guess, in the in the bath. But it's a mixture of ice and water, which is uh, mixture that something that's similar to what we're going to be talking about today. You would use a quality for a solid and liquid in that case to figure out what the properties are when you have the solid and liquid in equilibrium. In our case, we're going to be talking about liquid and vapor in equilibrium. Uh, but we don't want to put the guy in a liquid, uh, a water liquid vapor mixture because that means he would be boiling. We don't want to do that. So anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting picture related to what we're going to talk about today. So before we get started on that, I just wanted to, to recap a couple of things, actually provide a little more detail on a couple of things that were covered in the last video lecture. And what we have here is the saturated liquid volume mixture. Let me write that down. Saturated liquid vapor mixture organized according to temperature. And then this one is organized according to pressure. So they're just little snippets from those tables. And one of the things I want to do is, is just explain how we determine what phase the substance is in from these tables. Okay, so let's say we're just given some arbitrary temperature and pressure. So we're just given some arbitrary temperature and pressure, and I want to figure out what phase the material is in. What we can do is refer to these saturated liquid vapor mixture tables and use these to figure out what phase we're in. Okay, so if I'm given some arbitrary temperature and pressure, one thing I could do is I could look up the temperature in the saturated liquid vapor mixture table, so that would be this one. And what I would do is say, okay, for that temperature, let's say the temperature is, is 20 degrees Celsius, so we're right there. I would look up what the saturation pressure is for that, okay? And then I would see whether my current pressure, the pressure I'm interested in, is greater than, equal to, or less than that saturation pressure. So if at that given temperature, if P is less than the saturation pressure, and remember the saturation pressure is this value, then we're dealing with a superheated vapor. And I'll show you this graphically in a moment. If P is equal to P saturation, then we're dealing with the saturated liquid vapor mixture. And if P is greater than P saturation then we're dealing with a compressed liquid. Okay, so that's how we can determine this just from the saturated liquid vapor mixture table. Let me show this to you graphically. So let's say we have a temperature specific volume plot. Here's our vapor dome. Okay, and let me draw an isobar on this. So here is, let's say this is the temperature we're interested in is right here. So let me draw the isobar corresponding to the saturation pressure for that. So that would look like this. So this is the P saturation for that particular temperature. So given that temperature, this is the saturation pressure isobar corresponding to that particular temperature. Now let me draw a couple of other isobars. Let me draw one that's a little bit above. So this is P greater than P saturation. And then let me draw one below. This is P less than P saturation. Okay, so now if we're going back to this if-then relationship here, if our pressure is less than P saturation, so again, P saturation, this value right here, let me highlight it. It's this green one. That green one is this way over here. If that, if the pressure is less than P saturation, then it corresponds to this kind of isobar. So that means what would be is would be right there, right? Because we're at this particular temperature, 
and we're on this particular isobar, which is less than P saturation. It's below the saturation one. So you can see that puts us in the superheated vapor region. If the pressure is equal to P saturation, then that means we're somewhere in here, right? Because we're at this temperature and this pressure, so we're somewhere right in here. We don't know where exactly we are in here because we need another quantity to figure that out. That other quantity that we often use is quality, or if you were given like specific volume, for example, you could nail down where you are, but you need something else to figure it out. And if the pressure is greater than pre P saturation, that would be, oops, I went way too far. We would be up on this isobar right here. And so you would see that we would cross that one right there. And this is the compressed liquid region. Again, this isobar, you can see P is greater than P saturation. So that crosses at that temperature and that isobar, we're in the compressed liquid region. So that's how you can figure out where you are on that, on that, uh, what phase you are, uh, what phase the material's in. And you can see it kind of graphically here, it makes sense. So you can do a similar thing if you're using the saturated liquid vapor mixture table based on, or, you know, organized according to pressure. Let me just draw that one out on a PV diagram. Previous plot was a TV diagram, so here's our vapor dome. So here's an isotherm. And let's say the pressure, again, let's say we're arbitrarily given the temperature and pressure, and I want to do this based on pressure. So this is the pressure we're interested in. This would be the T saturation corresponding to that, because you can see at that pressure, this is the, we're under, under the vapor dome here, so that would be the T saturation. That's this temperature. Let's say we're dealing with one bar. So if that's the case, this is the T saturation. So that would be this one right there, right? And then let me draw an isotherm above it and an isotherm below it. So this temperature is greater than T saturation. This temperature is less than T saturation. So if my temperature is less than T saturation, then that puts us in the compressed liquid region. You can see that here. So here's the pressure I'm interested in right here. Here's T less than T saturation. If I follow that isotherm, you can see we're intersecting right there. And that puts us in the compressed liquid region. If T is equal to T saturation, of course, then we're dealing with a saturated liquid vapor mixture. That means we're somewhere in here, you know, at this pressure, here's the saturation temperature corresponding to that pressure. So we're somewhere in here. We don't know where exactly. We need another piece of information like specific volume or maybe quality or something else to figure it out. And then if T is greater than T saturation, then that puts us in the superheated vapor region. You can see that here. So here's T greater than T saturation, that isotherm. And you can see that intersects with this pressure right there. And that's in the superheated vapor region. So we've done it based on looking at the temperature or looking at the pressure. These kinds of pictures really kind of help guide us as to figuring out where we are exactly in, in the, in the in the TV or PV diagrams telling us what kind of phase we're dealing with and what table we're going to need. Uh, if we're over here, we can use the compressed liquid tables or the approximations I talked about in the last video lecture. If we're out here, we need the superheated vapor tables. If we're in here, then we use these saturated liquid vapor mixture tables. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to cover. The other one that I wanted to cover refers to these particular values for internal energy enthalpy, entropy. Actually, these are specific internal energy, specific enthalpy, specific entropy. Those quantities are found using some reference value. What I mean by that is when these, when these quantities are tabulated, there's a particular state that the substance is in that's considered the zero or reference value. Okay, so if you look through the tables, there'll be some value. These are decreasing as temperature decreases, and I can't remember offhand what the particular reference value is. I think it's pretty close to zero degrees Celsius, something like that. But anyway, there's a particular reference value where the U and H and S are set equal to zero. That reference value is arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. So the reason I mention this to you is because if you look at these tables, like at 20 degrees Celsius, you get internal, a specific internal energy of 83.912. But if you use a different set of tables, maybe from some other textbook, the value for specific internal energy may be a little different. That's okay. The reason is, is because we never really use the 
these values as an absolute quantity. We always use them as differences. So for example, if you think about the first law, we have the change in total energy of the system. It's equal to the heat into it minus the work done by the system. Where that change in total energy, that was equal to the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Right, so the thing I really want to highlight is we're always dealing with changes, differences. And so if another table uses a different reference value, a different reference point, it'll be off from this table by a certain constant. And so that's okay because when you, let, let's say that some other table has the, the, let's do it as a specific, a specific internal energy that's different from our internal, specific internal energy by constant. So let's say this is our value of specific internal, internal energy coming from this table. Let's say this value comes from a different table, maybe another textbook, and they're just going to be different by constant, right? But if we do a delta U prime, that'll be like U plus C. So uh, let's write this. Delta U prime is like U prime 2 minus U prime 1, just a difference. But U prime 2 is just going to be U2 plus C, and U prime 1 is going to be U1 plus C. And you'll see that the C's actually cancel out, and so delta U prime just ends up equaling delta U, which is just U2 minus U1. So the delta quantities come out to be the same regardless of the reference value because everything's just off by a constant. So don't be alarmed if you look at our tables that we're using in this course and you see different values than tables in some other textbook or some other reference. That doesn't really matter so much. It's because we're using the differences, these deltas, that are, are what's important, not the absolute value. And the deltas come out to be the same. Okay. So anyway, don't be alarmed by that. That's just another thing I wanted to highlight. All right, so now let's get to the main topic for today, and that's quality. So quality is used to help us determine what the properties are when we're under the vapor dome where you have a mixture of vapor and liquid. And so it's defined as the ratio of the mass of the substance, so like mass of water, in the vapor phase to the total mass of the substance, which would be the mass of the vapor plus the mass of the liquid. So it looks like this in equation form. This is the quality right here. So that's our quality. And we have the mass, the mass. So we just say we have some uh, particular quantity or some total mass of water or whatever substance. It'd be the mass of that substance that's in the vapor phase divided by the total mass. So this is only defined when we're in the solid liquid vapor mixture region. Sorry, not solid, saturated liquid vapor mixture region. Okay, so it's, it's when we just have a, a mixture of vapor and liquid. It, it's not defined when you're all, uh, when you're dealing with compressed liquid or superheated vapor. It's not defined in those regions. It's only defined in the saturated liquid vapor mixture region. Okay, so when you have a quality of zero, that means that the mass of vapor would be zero, so it would be all saturated liquid. Right? And that would put us on this line right here. This is our saturated liquid line. This is where the quality is zero, right along that blue line. Right? And then when the quality is one, that's all saturated vapor. Okay, so if, if, uh, if, if it's one, that means that the numerator and denominators are equal so it means that there must not be any liquid. It must just be all vapor, right? So that would put us along this line over here. So uh, I can't write this very easily sideways, but saturated vapor quality is equal to one. Now somewhere in between, and let's say, let me just draw a line here. Let's make it horizontal, not at an angle. So let's say somewhere in here, in this region, the quality is gonna be between zero and one. Okay, so it's, we're somewhere between zero and one when we're in that region. All right, so the way we find the value of the properties given the quality is we use a linear combination of the properties of the liquid and the properties of the vapor. 
So let me show you that. That's just written down here. So let's say we have some specific property Z. So Z is just some arbitrary property. And I want to find its value when I'm in this, the, the saturated liquid vapor mixture region under the vapor dome. The way I find it is I take the fraction that's liquid. So this, this relationship here, this is the mass fraction that's liquid. And then multiply it by the value of the property in the saturated liquid state. So that would be the value of the property along that blue line. So I'm taking basically the property value in its liquid state multiplying it by what fraction of the total mass is actually liquid, and then adding to it the mass fraction that's vapor, that's the quality, and multiplying that by the property value uh, for the saturated vapor. So that would be the property along that red line. Okay, so I'm taking how much mass is liquid, multiplying it by its property, and adding to it how much of the mass is vapor and multiplying that by the vapor properties. And then you add those two together. That's what I mean by a linear combination. You add those two together and then you get the actual property value. Okay, so that's how you use the quality. You could rearrange this equation and it looks has a form that looks like that, for example. So all I did was just expand out the multiplication here and then just kind of rearranged it. And you can, you can write it this way as well. So this is the value of the property in the saturated liquid state. By the way, just remember that the subscript F refers to the saturated liquid state. And the subscript G here refers to the saturated vapor state. I will frequently use the subscript L and the subscript V instead. So sometimes I'll use an F or an L. Sometimes you'll see me use a G or a V. I apologize for that, but you see it both ways pretty frequently. It's easy to remember. Just think of F as fluid, liquid, fluid. They're similar. G is a gas or vapor. That one's probably a little easier to remember. So anyway, if you were another, just rearranging this equation over here, you can write it as the value of the property in the saturated liquid vapor mixture state is the value in the saturated liquid state plus what fraction is vapor, so that's the quality. And then this is the difference in the properties between the vapor state and the liquid state. Sometimes this is given the symbol Z, I think it's uh, FG, yeah. So it's just the, the change in the property going from the liquid state to the gas state. Okay, so that's Sometimes you'll see tables with property values sub FG. That's just the difference in the two. Okay, so it's just another way to write it. So for example, if you wanted to evaluate the specific internal energy, given a particular value of the quality. Now, if you're given a value for the quality, that means you're somewhere in, under the vapor dome. Because remember, quality is only defined when you have a saturated liquid vapor mixture, okay? So you know immediately if you're given a quality of like 0.7, you know immediately that you're dealing with a saturated liquid vapor mixture. You don't have to worry about is it a compressed liquid or a superheated vapor. You know it's a mixture. So if you wanted to find the specific internal energy at a given quality, you could find it like this. This is the value of this, the specific internal energy. This is the fraction of the mass that's liquid multiplied by the saturated liquid value for the internal energy plus the fraction of the mass that's vapor, that's the quality, times the value of the specific internal energy in the saturated vapor state. Okay, so it's probably a little easier to understand this through some examples, and I have some online that you can take a look at to get a little more insight on how to do it. One other thing, if you're given property values, you can always back out what the quality is. If you just rearrange this equation, so let me do it, let me do it for specific volume, for example. You were trying to find the specific volume and you're given this and, and then you're either given the quality you could find the specific volume this way if i rearrange that equation it'll look like this so
So that's if you're given a, a property like specific volume here, and you know the saturated liquid value for the specific volume and the saturated vapor value for the specific volume, you could rearrange that equation to find the quality using this form. So, you know, you can rearrange the equation to find the quality if you need to find that. Or you could, if you know the quality, you could find the value of the property just using this form. Okay. Let's do one uh, quick example. I said I have some examples online, but I'm just going to do one of them here just to be instructive about it. What is the specific internal energy of water at a pressure of 7 bar, that's an absolute pressure, and a temperature of 164.95 degrees Celsius at a quality of 0.5? So now, since it says quality of 0.5, I know immediately I'm dealing with a saturated liquid vapor mixture. So I know I'm under the vapor dome. Uh, since I'm given the pressure 7 bar, that's, that's a nice round temperature. So I'm going to go to the saturated liquid vapor mixture table organized according to pressure because it's just it's a nice even pressure here and it's just easier for me to use that one. So here's that saturated liquid vapor mixture tables according to pressure. I just took a snippet of it so you can see the pressure here of 7 bar. When I look at that I can see that the temperature the corresponding saturation temperature is 164.95 which corresponds to this temperature which means that we're in a saturated liquid vapor mixture uh, phase. So it's, it's a mixture of liquid and vapor. We expected that because we have a quality here. So we, it wouldn't make any sense if, if, this, if the temperature wasn't this value. Then if it wasn't this value, then it'd be a compressed liquid or superheater, superheated vapor, and then it shouldn't even have a quality, right? So there would be some error in the problem statement. So we expected, expected that this would be the saturation temperature. And we want to find what the specific internal energy is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the specific internal energy using this relation that we just talked about. So there's our expression. This is the fraction of the mass that's liquid multiplied by the saturated liquid value. Fraction of the mass that's vapor multiplied by the, the specific internal energy in the saturated vapor state. I'm given that the quality is 0.5. So I have that. The saturated liquid value for the specific internal energy is this quantity right here. So this will be the 696.23 kilograms per kilojoule. And then, so that one's this one. And then the saturated vapor value for the internal energy is going to be this one right here. 2571.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And then we can just go ahead and do the calculation and you'll get the specific internal energy comes out to be uh, 1634.0 kilojoules per kilogram. Now here I'm not using my three significant digits rule and the reason for that is because these these properties are given more accurately than three significant digits. They're actually given out to five significant digits so I'm going to keep my answer to five significant digits as well. And if I wanted to sketch out what this looks like on a on my uh, PV or TV diagrams, let me do that. So let's start with first with a TV diagram. Here's our vapor dome. The temperature that I'm interested in is the 164.95. So 164.95 degrees C. And the corresponding saturation isobar for that one will look like this. So this pressure is 7 bar absolute, right? Because that's the, the saturation pressure at that temperature. It's just shown right here. Puts us under the vapor dome. And to find out where I am on the specific volume here, so I know I'm somewhere under here. To find out where I am exactly, what I should really do is calculate the specific volume. So I can do that calculation as well. Specific volume would be, I can find it in the same way that I found the specific internal energy. Again, this would be 0.5 for the uh, quality. The specific volume for the saturated liquid would be this value right here. The 0 0.00, let me write that down, 0 0.0011080 cubic meters per kilogram. And then the specific volume for the saturated vapor is right there. It's 
bigger value because the vapor takes up more space than a, a liquid, right? That makes sense. So that's 0 0.27277 cubic meters per kilogram. And by the way, just to show those graphically, here is that specific volume in the saturated liquid state. Here's the specific volume in the saturated, let me put it as a V, in the saturated vapor state. I guess I should be a little more careful. This is a V here as well. Right, so those are this. Let me highlight these. The yellow here, that's this value right up there. And then let me highlight in uh, kind of pink. This one is this value over here. Okay, so hopefully... Hopefully that makes sense to you. And so then if we do that calculation, the specific volume for our particular quality of uh, 0.5 comes out to be 0 0.136939 cubic meters per kilogram. And that would put us somewhere in here, let's say. So that one I'll highlight in a, in a different color. Let's do that one in blue. So that's this value. So that's where we are on that TV diagram. And you can do the same thing on a PV plot. Let's do that as well. Here we're dealing with a pressure of 7 bar. So let's draw that here. So here's 7 bar absolute. Let me draw the isotherm for that. That isotherm, that's the saturation temperature of 164 0.95 degrees C, and again, this is the VL, saturated liquid specific volume. Here's this V sub V, that's the saturated vapor specific volume. Let me put those in the same shading as the others. And then our particular specific volume was somewhere here. That puts us right there. That's the, the blue value. So that's what it would look like on a PV diagram and a TV diagram. So hopefully all of this is starting to make sense to you. Hopefully it's coming together. You can see how we make use of these saturated liquid vapor mixture tables, how we find now whether, so I talked at the very beginning, how to find whether we're dealing with a compressed liquid, saturated liquid vapor mixture, or superheated vapor. And then once we figure out what phase we're in, if we're in the saturated liquid vapor mixture region, then we need another quantity like the quality to figure out where we are exactly under that vapor dome. And that the way we find that is, you know, just what we've worked out here. That's how you find the properties under that, that vapor dome. And then hopefully you're convinced that these TV and PV diagrams are kind of helpful for visually seeing what's happening and kind of showing where we are in that plot. We're going to continue to make a lot of use of these kind of plots. So try to get comfortable with those. All right, I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this lecture, so we're going to go ahead and end it here. The next video lecture will talk about specific enthalpy. That's this property in the tables. We haven't really covered it yet, but we're going to we're going to do that in the next video lecture.